Yesu. Yesu. Thank you very much. Uh, may I begin by acknowledging the presence of uh, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, the flag bearer of the great National Democratic Congress, uh, and the spouse who is here. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, the Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Alban Sumana Babin, who is here with us, uh, Prof. Nana Jane Opokuajima, the running mate of our flag bearer, my national chairman, all members of the National Executive Committee of the party who are here, the former Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Doa Jaho, who is present, Minority Leader, and all our MPs who are here, members of the Council of Elders, the Chairman of the, plan, the Manifesto Committee of the party. Uh, the Planning Committee of this uh, manifesto, we want, to, we want to thank you for the good work done. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just begin by acknowledging that um, we have a task ahead of us come December 7, 2024. And what we are about to do today is to unveil our policies that we want to present to the people of Ghana with a hope that that can inspire our people into knowing that we truly have a plan for our country. Over the last eight years, what we have seen has been a systematic degradation of our nation. A nation that was on a cusp of transformation has systematically been brought to a level where today hope is gone and opportunities for our young people have virtually vanished. So today we are going to be listening to the unveiling of a set of policies that will bring about some hope for our country again and set this country anew towards restoring our country to where it ought to be. Now, but before I go into the nation that was left for our friends when they took over in 2017, let me just say it this way that we need to be careful that the competition for power should never become a simple competition between who can promise more. Because if it's an issue of promising, we know we in the NDC we can never match our friends in the NPP. I mean, many of you remember that even as far back as 1992, in that very first election of this fourth republic, NPP already started promising this country their capacity to build rail lines from Accra all the way to the northern part of Ghana, 1992. So these are people who are known for easy promises. Because unfortunately their belief is that to win power, you simply need to say anything. So anything that can be promised, just promise it. So a contest between us and them on the back of promises is a contest that naturally we will lose. Why? Because if you have integrity and you have honor, you don't just promise anything for the sake of promise. So the pro the, what I want to establish before I go into the Ghana we left is that promises are important, but promises based on policies that we want to deliver must be inspired by principles. When principles inspire your policies, you are able to deliver those policies. Now, so when, for example, you say that you want to transform Ghana in 18 months, we know that that's a policy that is not underpinned by any principle. That's a policy that is simply anchored on lies and deception. We know that when you say, for instance, that you want to change this country from production from taxation to production, you clearly are stating a policy that is not anchored on truth. You are lying because it's simply not possible in a developing country to tell people that you want to remove taxation and simply have a country that is only for production. It's not possible. Some amount of taxation will definitely continue. When you say one village, one dam, and you know beyond doubt that you do not have that capacity, you are deceiving the people, and that is what we have seen over the last eight years, that every single one of those promises today have become promises that are null and void. Now, so we want to make a difference. 
And the difference we want to make is our promises and our policies are anchored on principles. And those principles represent the life of the promises that we make. So, if you saw over the last, over the eight years that we were in power, what it is that we were able to deliver for our country, you must appreciate that it is because every single thing we said, even though we were not perfect, was anchored by sound principles. And those principles were anchored on the respect we have for our people. The need for us not to just tell our people anything because we want power, but tell them what it is that we can truly achieve. Now so, in the eight years that we were in office, these are some of the things that we left behind for our friends. Even though they came into office and the first thing they did was to tell the country that we left for them a country that was destroyed, a country that was in a mess. But truly, if you go through the record, you know that many governments would actually be happy to find the foundations that we left behind when we left office in 2016. In 2016, when we were living, we delivered, we delivered for our friends in the MPP a sound economy that was marked by sustainable public debt with a debt to GDP ratio that stood at 55.6%. A stable credit rating of B minus, a low budget deficit of 6.1%, 6 a declining inflation rate that stood around 15%. We handed over to them a depreciation of currency that stood about 9.6%. Handed over to them a manufacturing sector that was very strong. We handed over to them two massive oil fields that they inherited. Handed over to them a cocoa sector that was thriving and was producing at over 960,000 metric tons a year. Handed over to them a number of significant buffers. And some of these buffers are the ESLA that we handed over to them. We handed it over to them Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, handed over to them a sinking fund, and all these were funds that any government taking office would be happy to inherit. Now, apart from this, we handed over to our friends the most monumental portfolio of investment that you can ever boast of in every sector, whether in the health sector, in the educational sector, in the energy sector, in across the whole segment of all that we had in government. Many people would actually wish that they inherited such an economy. Our friends unfortunately took over and pretended this was an economy that was in chaos. Now when you take over a country and you cannot even acknowledge what you take over, you lie about the quality of the economy that you had made, right from the word go, you are in difficulty. Now, so, what I want to just close today to say is that our manifesto that we are presenting to you today, just as we have done in the past, is a manifesto that will be delivering to you promises and policies that we know are achievable. The things that we cannot do, we will not talk about. But what it is that we can do, we will elaborate today in order for the country to know the clear difference between the NDC and the NPP. The final thing I will say before I say that is that no government is perfect, so we accept that mistakes can be made. But what you do when you are in government is to show the humility, which humility means that when you are charting a path and there is a problem, you should have the capacity to acknowledge it and be able to receive the feedback so that corrections can be made. The manifesto we are presenting today is by no means going to be a perfect manifesto. But one thing we can promise you is the humility of the leadership, the humility of John Mahama, the humility of the people who are going to work with him to be able to say if there is a problem, we will be able to receive the necessary feedback and do the corrections in order to be able to deliver for the future. Unfortunately, we deal with people who even when it is blatantly wrong, even when the vehicle is driving in the wrong direction, they are too proud they are not humble enough, they are too arrogant to acknowledge it, and they continue driving in that same direction, refusing any feedback, refusing any constructive criticism. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to say more than this, but to simply establish to you that we are a party that makes every effort to establish every policy and every promise we made on sound principles, the principles of truth, the principles that our national anthem teaches us, 
that we need to cherish fearless honesty in all we do. It is only on the back of that honesty that we can truly have a nation that is truly great and strong. Thank you very much.